this video I'm going to explain how pruning affects flowering. And at the end of the video I'll give you some special tips on how to prune for the best flowers. Let's have a look at a couple hydrangea in my garden. In the center of the picture you see two large plants. Both of these are hydrangea paniculata limelight. This is a fantastic plant and everybody should be growing it. Both plants are about the same age. They're about five years old and they're the same size. Last year they were about six and a half feet tall. The one in the back has nice white flowers and it has not been pruned for several years. The one closer to you has a green chartreuse color and this one was pruned this past spring. This one was getting too tall for its space so I decided to cut it back to about two and a half feet. Now if you look at these two you'll notice that both shrubs are about the same size. Even though this shrub has been pruned back quite heavily it's grown like crazy this summer. It's now about six feet tall and is almost as tall as the one in the background which wasn't pruned at all. This is a fairly common response to pruning. Pruning makes things grow. Now most shrubs won't grow quite this much after pruning but these hydrangeas grow quite easily and this one has just taken off. Pruning can also affect bloom time. Let's have a closer look at these two shrubs. This is a close-up of the unpruned one. You'll notice that most of the flower head is nice and white with the tip showing a bit of green. The white are the open petals and the green are buds that aren't quite open yet. You can see most of the flower head is open. If we go and have a look at the hydrangea that was pruned, you'll notice there are very few open flowers. Most of the flower head is still showing buds and that gives it that green chartreuse color. Last year both of these plants bloomed at exactly the same time. But this year, due to pruning, this one is at least two weeks behind where it should be. And this delay in flowering was caused by the pruning this spring. This is a smoke bush called Grace. And new growth has this fantastic orangey red color, particularly when the light is coming from the back. In the spring, I cut this plant back to about six inches. It's a very vigorous grower and can take that kind of pruning. This picture was taken in July and it's already about four feet tall. By the end of the summer, it'll easily reach seven and a half feet. Pruning had one other consequence. This plant normally flowers in June or July on new wood. But this year, it doesn't look like it's going to flower at all. It's already August and I don't see any buds forming. I think it's going to skip a year. And this can be the consequences of severe pruning. Here's another shrub that was cut back very heavy this spring. The plant is an elderberry called black lace, another great plant for the garden. I hadn't pruned it for a number of years and so it was getting quite tall and I thought that it really needed to be contained more so I cut it right back to the ground this spring. This picture was taken in August and it normally blooms in July so it should be covered with flower heads. But I don't see any flowers developing. Now I think it will still flower before fall, but it's possible that it will just skip a year. These are some good examples of how pruning affects flowering. It can delay flowering, usually by only a couple weeks, but in some cases the shrub just won't flower at all for a year. Here are eight other tips for getting your shrubs to bloom their best. The best time to prune a shrub that flowers in the spring is right after flowering. Rule of thumb is to prune it within three weeks of flowering. If the shrub blooms in summer or fall, the best time to prune is late winter or very early spring. I like to prune these shrubs while there's still snow on the ground. That way I can walk in the garden and I don't compress the soil. You might be wondering when your shrub flowers, so I'm going to provide a list of shrubs and their flowering period in the description below. Some shrubs seem to flower all summer long. A good example of this are some types of roses. You can prune them pretty much any time you want. It's usually a good idea to prune them back while you're deadheading the flowers. We're starting to see a lot of new shrubs as rebloomers. One example of this is a lilac called bloomerang. It flowers in the spring 
and then it flowers again mid and late summer. So when do you prune this type of shrub? It's a good idea to treat them like spring bloomers. Prune them after the first flush of flowers. The flowers that come later in summer will be developed on new wood, which will grow in late spring and early summer. Sometimes shrubs just stop blooming and people wonder why. Now there's many reasons that would cause your shrub not to bloom, but one of them is that it's just getting too old. If you haven't pruned your shrub in a number of years, try giving it a good cut. Cutting out some of the old stems will reinvigorate the plant to grow new growth. And this new growth flowers easier than the old stems. It's best to prune dead and diseased branches as soon as you see them. Doesn't matter what time of year it is. Rule number seven might surprise you. You can prune whenever you want. All of the other rules I've gone through are designed to maximize the amount of blooms on the plant. They're not really designed for the health of the plant. In fact, the best time to prune all shrubs is in late winter, early spring, but that might sacrifice flowers, and so we've developed the above rules. But as far as the plant goes, you can prune it any time you want. Some shrubs produce a lot of flowers. Some of these hydrangea paniculatas are a good example. For these kind of shrubs, prune out the excess buds as soon as you see them. This will produce a shrub that looks much better when it finally opens its blooms. If you follow these eight simple rules, you will always have shrubs that flower really well. If you have any other additional questions about pruning, please leave them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. I'm also in the process of making a number of other pruning videos, so if you want to learn more about pruning, make sure you subscribe to this channel, and you'll be notified when new videos are available. Thank you very much for watching.